shuffle. The, most of the same players, I think. Eh, no, they have a few different players, um, but a, a few of the same. Uh, Team of Divinity versus Raven Flight, and again, this is just a, a friendly in-house style game. We shall see what they decide to go for. We're waiting Ten on the first band. Stuff like Rubik, Shadow Shaman, Sand King, Five uh, Tinker, remaining. typical first the band stuff. Bat Disruptor, I suppose. Phoenix, bat. I don't understand why. Maybe there's a Phoenix one trick on Raven Flight. I do not know. Uh, forgive me, I'm going to take a quick sip of water. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So with Disruptor and Phoenix Band, we still got four bands left in this first phase. First pick will be going to Dyer Raven Flight. Team Rubik team and Nyx band out. Also, two pretty pretty solid heroes, very popular right now. Uh, Rubik has a lot of flexibility, can turn your own draft against you at times. Nyx Assassin, a Tinker Rain Counter, team Shaman, team and Batrider Band. Tinker still available. So with the Nyx gone and even a Batrider gone, that's a, a few Tinker and Disruptor even. A few Tinker counters have been removed from the pool. I wouldn't be surprised to see it first phase. I think a lot of people are a little scared of picking mids Ten first phase. But when it's such a strong hero the like the Tinker, I don't think there's a problem with it. The Five same can be said remaining. for like really strong carries. Like when Morphling was really good or Lone Druid was really good, you would see them first picked all the Dying time. Tiny Dying also Dying. first pick worthy a lot of the time. But Bane picked up by Raven Fight and now Team of Divinity with their team two picks to rebuttal. I would still like to see one of these teams grab a Tinker. There's a, several of his counters are gone. Uh, and all of his other remaining counters aren't really that good. Maybe a Bounty Hunter Ten is seconds okay. Remaining. Five seconds remaining. Team Divinity. Divinity, I should say. I will just call Dire them that. Pick. Uh, they decide to go for a Puck. Good flexible pick could go mid, could go off lane. There's a lot of different things you can do with the puck. Uh, also provides a lot of vision with the orb. So if Raven Flight did pick up a Tinker, which I still think Radiant would be a good pick, pick. Uh, they have something for it. And now they're going to grab the Ogre Magi. I suspect Wraith King will be banned because Fav played it last game, and Fav just really likes the hero. It's something that they really want to play all the time. So we'll see what ends up happening with it. It also goes great with Ogre Magi. And Raven Flight with their next pick. We'll have Dying to see what they end up man. going for. And they decide to go for the Lycan. A really popular, very strong carry right now. Radiant team. Night Soccer, banned by Divinity. And Raven Flight, RF, Raven, one of those things. I don't want to say both of those Dying words all the time. Going to ban out an Arc Warden. Wraith King still available. I wouldn't be surprised to see Team of Divinity pick it up. Although maybe Raven Flight are counting on it. They do have a Bane who is pretty good against him. Drains his mana with the Fiend's Grip, and he doesn't have that much mana to be drained, so it could cause problems for that hero. Ten seconds remaining. Terrorblade banned out by Team Divinity. Outward Devour banned out by Raven Fight. So Tinker still in the pool, and Raven Flight look like they might want it. Uh, you've got a Lycan already, so your push would be very, very strong very obnoxious. Team, team of Divinity pick. are grabbing Earthshaker. Earth Shaker. So a lot of control. I would think uh, depends if Puck's offlane or not. Mid Puck against the Tinker isn't bad. You can dodge the rockets at least, but the laser harass is still very difficult to get away from. But who knows, they might Ten just ignore Tinker this game. Could go the classic, grab Five an Invoker. Like an Invoker, both go Necro 3. Get the Wexort Invoker, put the Alacrity on a Necro Creep. Destroy, or a Forge Spirit or something, just destroy towers. But against an Earthshaker, getting that Creep Heavy build is a little risky. Dire team pick. Raven Flight picking up a Brewmaster. Brewmaster. It's likely to be their offlane hero, a very strong offlaner right now. Pretty difficult to bully. Uh, Ogre Magi, though. If anyone can do it, it's him. The Radiant Ignite spam, team very pick. annoying. Team of Divinity also going to grab a Medusa for themselves. So that's their late game. Pretty much in the bag, and they have a good mid game already with the Earthshaker and the Ogre Magi and even the Puck. 
can create a lot of space for this Medusa, set up some kills for her, and protect her with a lot of control, and the Bloodlust will help her come online a little bit earlier, Ten seconds both remaining. just giving her a bit of increased DPS and helping her farm a little bit faster. Five this fight are remain. going to go with the Phantom, Phantom Lancer, a decent Lancer. hero against the Medusa, goes Diffusal Blade, tears through her mana shield very, very quickly, and once her mana shield is gone, the hero is pretty vulnerable. So, Team of Divinity, um, are either looking for an off laner or a mid, Ten or a support remaining. if it, if they want to do mid pug off lane shaker. Five so a very open remaining. draft from Divinity so far. I really like that. Raven Flight have all of their cores, so they're looking for a support of their own. Whereas Divinity can, since they have last pick, the fact that their draft is so open is very very good for them. It just means, oh, cool, it's a bad matchup for Puck mid. We'll just have Puck off lane, Shaker support, and so on and so forth. Like, you can just sh you can shake it up a lot. You can do a lot of different stuff with it. You can run Medusa mid or safe lane. You can run Puck off or mid. You can run Shaker in any of the three lanes, although the mid Shaker has kind of fallen out of favorability. Radiant team banned. Lion banned out by Team of Divinity. Good call. I think that would have been pretty rough for both the Puck and the Medusa. Raven Flight, they're already picked PL into an Earthshaker. They <laughs> delay made this choice. But uh who knows? Maybe they're not afraid of that Echo Slam. Ten seconds remaining. Radiant team. Timber saw banned by Raven Flight as the last ban. So now Raven Flight with ninth pick bit of a disadvantage because you don't really know what Divinity are planning on doing with their drafts. Not really. There's Ten seconds not, you kind of know what they're doing with their draft. They're setting up for a Medusa late game, but you don't know what they're going to do with their lanes. Remaining. You have no idea what's happening in these lanes. So Ravenfire are going to have to pick a very catch-all kind of support. Uh, Warlock would be pretty good. It goes late game. It's a decent pushing hero, an amazing team fighting hero. Uh, great laner as well. So you can use it to bully people very, very easily. Can pop the Shadow Word to help counter the Ogre Ignite. Dire team pick. But they're going to go for hunter. a Tide Hunter, which is interesting. Um, maybe it's a support Tide. You can jungle pretty well, I think. So Team of Divinity. Again, very open-ended draft. Remaining. They're good at a lot of stuff. Good at pickoffs, good at team fights, they have great late game. I think they almost definitely outskill Ravenflight unless this PL gets crazy and this Medusa is shut down. Uh, I expect Divinity to stack. I would actually really like this to be a safe Medusa off lane shaker mid puck. Uh, mid matchup for puck against either PL or Brew is very, very good. Shaker isn't going to have too many problems against whatever the safe lane is. And. It's got to be a mid PL. Medusa should be fine against an offlane brew. She's ranged. I mean, yeah, you got to deal with the the brew spray, which is annoying, but it's not impossible. And Divinity are going to go with a monkey king. Your hero. So I think, yeah, it's a carry monkey. Support shaker, support ogre. Mid Dusa, I'm guessing. An offlane puck. The monkey king. Uh, may go for Battle Fury. I believe his ult still procs the Battle Fury. Good against the PL. May not, though. Some of them choose to go for other items. Just raw damage. Try to burst people down with your right click. Get a really good uh, Boundless Strike in. So we'll have to see. Looking at the drafts, I like Divinity's draft better. I think Raven Flight is going to struggle very badly in team fights, especially whenever Ravage is on cooldown. Um, team of Divinity. Divinity don't have... I don't know, they just seem like a really well-rounded comp. Uh, Monkey King isn't very greedy compared to the Medusa, so once he gets a couple items, he can kind of just hand it off to her. He fights well really early because of Jingu Mastery and Boundless Strike. You have Dream Coil, you have Fissure, you have Echo Slam, although you do have to be cautious about the Brewmaster ult and the Ravage. Those are the two things that are going to make things difficult. Also, well-placed Nightmares and Fiend's Grip could really change the way the fight goes, but I'm not sold on their draft. It's very, very greedy. They have four melee heroes, I think. Yeah, four melee heroes against a Medusa and a Puck and a Shaker, a and even Monkey King. Uh, they're going to have to fight inside the Monkey King circle. The Dream Coil is going to do some work. 
Stone Gaze also going to cause some problems, but we'll see if they're able to keep it together. If they build an early lead, they may just be able to snowball out of control. And on the side of the Radiant, we have Trigon playing the Phantom Lancer on the Lycan. It's Control. Playing the Tidehunter is Fire Fist. Brewmaster being played by Clammy, and Bane is played by Maple Monkey. Meanwhile, speaking of monkeys, we have... Aw, look at that curry. It's cute. Uh, can, uh, Fav playing the Monkey King. So we'll see if uh, he makes Bane bow before him. And then Change of Heart playing the Earth Shaker. Retman playing the Ogre Magi. Spectrum on the Medusa. And last but definitely not least, the Fairy Dragon, Puck, being played by Soft. Uh, the lanes look really, really, really... And I, I'm trying not to sound, like, biased... But I really so like the Dire the Draft a lot more than the Radiant Draft. I don't remember what these teams' names are already. It just feels like a lot more is, is going to happen. Like a, a support tide is what I'm expecting. And it, does, it doesn't feel like they can make as much happen with just basically just the Bane. Oh, we need to be careful. There is a Fissure available. A nice Nightmare trying to get in front of that Bane, make him... Uh, get zoned. Puck going Heroes forward. He's gonna jump. To the field of glory. He's bullying this Bane. Treasures. We'll call it good with Spectrum grabbing two bounty runes. Tidehunter this gets one exciting. and Monkey King gets the other. So three bounty runes going on to the Dire. Radiant. Dire? Yes. I don't I didn't remember what was going on now. The dodge fab getting pretty low. Needs one more hit to get that Jingu. But the dodge coming in, the mischance I should say. Starting to bully them away. Needs wants to get that to get the healing in, but getting blocked by his own creeps and clammy and fire are a little bit too fast for him. Meanwhile, in the mid it's Medusa Dyer's versus Phantom Lancer. PL favored for a little while, but Medusa shouldn't be horrible here. And at the bot lane, it's Puck versus Bane and Lycan. Very difficult to find a kill on this Puck with these two heroes. Uh, unless Puck jaunts really awkwardly. Earth Shaker going to be making his way down to the bot lane. I don't think he necessarily needs to do that. Can just let the Puck chill out. Is that block? Yes. Soft. Just get that Dream Coil early. Maybe go find some kills with it. Spectrum farming up in the mid. It's pretty even between these two for a while. I don't think that again, not really. both of them have like one good spell in the lane. The Spirit Lance for PL and Medusa Mystic Snakes. They're just gonna tease each other with that ability. And that'll be the end of that. Meanwhile, up top, Monkey King happy to play against melee heroes, but the Brewmaster, very good against him. Just can blind him, has the dodge as well. So difficult sometimes to get those Jingu stacks off. Gush also gonna be I know that was an anchor smash. It's going to be annoying to CS when you're getting anchor smashed. So Fab gonna have a little bit of a difficult time, I think. Yes. We'll see though, he does have bound the strike now, so maybe some kill potential. South popped by you. Clammy. Soft getting bullied by the Bane. Bane, high base damage and Pops the Nightmare, Brain Sap coming up in 5 seconds, the right click, meanwhile Fire Fist and Clammy find the Monkey King up at the top, but Soft could be in trouble, Jips jumps away and pops the south, so should be able to slip away just fine. Ignite now going to be a bother, they have a Fissure available as well, Clammy throwing at that taunt, little does he know there's an Earthshaker here, blind on the Fav. Fire Blast onto Clammy. Clammy, though, happy to trade now that the Shaker is here. Gets the Enchant Totem off, but no Raptor Shock. There is a Fissure available, but I don't know if they can get it. Change of Heart actually does manage to zone him out. And the Jingu Mastery, not yet proxy. He's got the blind on him. Now he has Boundless Strike. Next one to just one hero. So now Clammy can actually find it, but the Anchor Smash is going to kill him off. That gank backfires complete. These two heroes incredibly tanky, and Monkey King is getting punished. With the dodge, the Kraken shell, and oh no, they might find another change of heart getting very, very low. A couple more right, this will do it. The anchor smash not going to latch. Things are starting off great for the uh, Raven flight, or Raven. That's what I'm going to call them. In mid, Spectrum having a fine time against this Phantom Lancer. They're just pretty much trading, harass at each other. 
Arcane Boots finished on the uh, Tide Hunter. It's a pretty fast Arcane Boot. I wonder if I'm just going to maybe max clap because of that. Tide is... I mean, it's already really hard to kill him, and I, I think that lane's basically ruined. Monkey King has died twice now. It might be better to put Puck up against that and have Monkey King go by. He might have some kill potential there, and definitely a lot harder to kill off. Change of heart with an Invis rune on the prowl. Maybe trying to find someone somewhere, but Puck pops the south. Fairly low, only level 4, so not a ton of damage available. Clammy in the mid. Gets hit by a Mystic Snake, but doesn't really care. Orthodox, but yeah, still, change of heart is here. There is a doppelganger available, and now that that's over, he's just gonna have to walk away. Clammy back on his way to the top lane. Has a bottle, so maybe gonna be roaming on this brew. Get that tide under level six. Both of those heroes really want their six, though. PL just dodging these Mystic Snakes. Spirit Lance coming out, getting a bit of nuke damage. I think he just toggled off his. Uh, ability just then. Now Fab getting very, very low going on. The tank is match cooling down in just one second. We'll probably find that kill. He's got one HP up the slow. Bloodlust keeping Fab alive. They don't have the gush. If Fab is revealed while the gush is up though, he might die. He's still just barely alive. But Fab will manage to wait. Now, change of heart could be in trouble. No bound the strike for four seconds. He needs to be cautious. Doesn't want to be caught by a gush. And now Clammy taking up a couple tower shots. The bound the strike available. It does get the kill. And now Fire Fist. Perhaps to endanger himself, but so tanky, I don't know if they want to risk getting their heroes in melee range of him. So they do get a nice revenge kill for Fav, but he's still very far behind in CS when you compare him to the rest of the cores. Less than half the CS of the Lycan, and also far below pretty much every, uh, like the mids and the safe lane is. Puck has a jump if he wants it. Doesn't use it though, it would be very bad. Nightmares himself though, so Soft just gonna wander away. That was something. Level 6 on Tragen now. Medusa going to be having her 6 fairly soon. Need to eat. Like they might find someone. They spot Clammy. Fab going to try farming up. The Aftershock going to slow him up. He dodges the enchant and attack the blind coming out as well. Onto 1, the Fissure. Thunderclap already used. Tidehunter not there just yet, but just dodges and dodges for days. Clammy, he walks it off. Now the blind Fab could be in serious trouble. Pops out the boundary strike, but doesn't have a jump away. It's on cooldown thanks to the damage, and I think he's just dead. The Spirit Lance finishes him off. Ogre trying to get the Spit Phantom Lance here, but it's not going to work. Change of Heart could be in trouble himself. Now Gush on cooldown, but actually looks like Retman, the one that could be getting jumped on. The Thunderclap coming out, eating up one of his infused range up charges. The Fissure trying to block him out, but he actually stones Retman out. Retman trapped in a really bad spot. Anchor Smash coming off cooldown. Fab is here, has found the spring coming out, trying to slow people up. Fire Fist getting gone on, change of heart low. Anchor Smash and Gush available. Gush slowing up Fab. Fab getting hit by the clap. He could go down. He pops the balance, but he only catches on one. He's going to die. And no, man, what a disastrous lane. This Monkey King forced to kneel before the Brewmaster and the Tide Hunter. He really can't do anything in this lane. They really need to change things up. And now Ratman on the run gets hit by the clap and the anchor smash. A double kill for Firefist. He's now sitting on 1100 gold. A 1k gold lead overall. 5 to 1. They get one of the one kill. Uh, so things looking pretty grim so far for uh, Divinity. Raven Flight are flying away with this game. Soft has the Dream Coil available. They may want to make a rotation of some kind. Brain Sap getting bullied a bit by this Lycan. Fissure is available. It comes out. Does catch the stun, but Dream Coil also going to be used. One second left. Dream Coil does snap on the Bane. Bane, fairly healthy for the time, though. Now they're looking for more control. Getting low. Puck does have the Jaunt. He does move forward. Needs to be cautious. Meanwhile, Spectrum kills off the Phantom Lancer in the mid, but it looks like at top there's also an engagement. And they're looking for Bane. Bane very low. It looks like Puck will get him. That right comes from over there. Flies downtown. Clammy at the bot. But that means there is no jump on Soft. Soft has the science available. A beautiful fissure from Change of Heart. But now Control on the prowl looking for this Puck. He has the jump forward. He needs to get away. Not get clapped on. Clap cooling down in one second. A nice stun from Change of Heart. And Puck will get away with that kill. Meanwhile at top, Tidehunter forced back. And Fab happy with things now that the Tidehunter is gone. So an extended engagement at the bot, and uh, comes out on top. Two kills across the map for, for Divinity. 
I was going to catch up just a little bit. Radiance middle tower that might be looking to hand. nightmare a puck. Soft, very, very low. A braid sap would have finished him off. And now Clammy roaming around trying Gaia's to find Spectrum. Spectrum sitting at level 8. The Brewmaster taunt. Blind onto Spectrum, not able to harass a little any. Fearsome Mystic Snake bouncing around. It doesn't go to Clammy. Tough oh, Fab going to get killed off by the Ravage. Dominating for Fire Fist. I bring sad Things go from tiger. bad to worse for You're this Monkey King. Radiance Middle Tower is not safe. Soft hanging out at bot. They might want to make a play under control if they have backup, but I think that's going to happen. Retman trying to get away from this Tide Hunter who is relentless, closing in on that mechanism as well. And once he gets that, you really cannot kill him. Fab still just level four. His support is a higher level than him. He doesn't have phase boots yet, and it's nine minutes. Radiance not to mention 20 CS. So Things are looking very, very bad. Mid did get denied though, so a little bit of a welfare check, although a bit reduced. You know, taxes and whatnot from that deny. Fav will have his phase boots soon. So my concern is, it's a really bad game to be a monkey king. Get those jingus off, you know. Hard to do that against all these melee heroes beating you up, not to mention the Tide Hunter Soft getting slowed down a little bit. John's away. Oh, John's into the Hornet's Nest. Soft, he's dead. Killed off very quickly. Caught between a rock and a hard place. Soft, uh, slaughtered. Throws his jaunt out aggressively and pays for it. And Fire Fisk, 70 seconds till Ravage is up, and I think his mech just got finished. Trigon looking for someone down here, it seems. Overall net worth. We see Medusa sitting at the top, and then it's three Radiant Heroes. Puck fair, a little bit behind, and the Monkey King very poor. Excellent. Dream Coil available. If they find someone, they may be able to make a jump with that Dream Coil. Ping's coming out to mid. They want to defend that a little bit. Bav, not level 6 yet. Dyer's bottom tower. They're getting a jump with Dream Coil on Trigon. Trigon getting low, and he will die here. Killed off by Spectrum. Another kill from the Medusa, but they do lose their tier 1 to control while that's happening. I would say that probably favoring Raven Flight is the they get a tier 1 tower, so a lot of gold for everybody on their team. Meanwhile, Divinity get like 400 total gold netted to them. And up top, Fab now level 6 has the Wukong's command, but they'll still be struggling in this game. Nine seconds until the Ravage. Looks like Firefist might make a play onto him. And he's just beating on this tower. Mechanism completed. He could afford a deep dive. Change of heart and Spectrum roaming around together. Radiance Middle Tower is on now. Now pick up at the top. Ravenfly are making a play on this tier one. It's basically dead, and they just retreat attack. from it. Don't want to risk Radiant's it. Tower has Monkey King gonna be going for a vanguard. Shaker still wants to get his blink dagger, but a ways away. Do so. Meanwhile, at the top of the net worth, with the mask of madness. Tower is under attack. Pigs coming out. They see the Medusa. Fab hiding on this tree. Imagine Dyer's if they cut this down. Spirit Lance going out onto Ratman. Ravage is up. They need to be careful. The, Mug, the Wukong's command comes out. They're trying to fight it. Just the Ravage could be there. Primal Split gets canceled from the stun. He still has the Boundless Strike going to come out. Connecting onto control. Soft gets the Dream Coil onto him. But meanwhile, they're getting pushed so far back. His own team. They have the Medusa ult if they want. Actually, she doesn't have it. The Ravage does come out. But Fab still alive. Doesn't have Jingu off yet. He needs to get a couple more hits to get that Jingu. And then he'll be fine. But no, Maple Monkey gets the Nightmare. Now they're going in onto him. Control needs to be cautious. Fab does have the Jingu. It is three ranks, so it is a lot of damage. The Soft coming forward. The stun from the Ice Blast. Tragen, though, finds a double kill. The Boundless Strike will finish him off. Soft going to go down two. A killing spree for Spectrum. A two for two. But looks like it so far is favoring the Dire. Now they're after this Bane. Bane needs to be cautious, but Monkey King himself could be zapped down by a Brain Sap if he is not careful. The Fish are going to connect onto Control, but I don't know if they can chase him down. The wolf is very fast. Spectrum looking for something to bound the strike. Will connect onto Bane, but Bane, level 6, still healthy. I don't know if they can continue pursuit. He doesn't have the damage. Now the Nightmare going to come out onto him. If they can get a cancel, they might be able to continue pursuit. One more hit on the Jingu, but it's not going to get timed out. That will be forced back. That fight seems to me like it favors Divinity. Medusa survives the whole time. 
they lost a couple supports and their puck, but they killed the brew. They killed the control, and I'm pretty. I think they killed the Phantom Master. Maybe. This fight recap did not pop up, so I'm not sure. But that fight does seem like it's pretty good for them. Medusa still at the top of the net worth. Monkey King still very far behind, but fortunately, yes. Chingu and Bloodlust will alleviate that that a little bit. He still has the utility. He can place with the Boundless Strike as well. Rutman trying to stack these camps for his Medusa. Who just completed her fourth stat, making her more mobile, giving her some more mana as well, which increases her survivability. Now push coming up at top soft has Dream Coil available once again, going for a Veil of Discord very close to it. Will help his team a little bit, at least his supports quite a lot. Won't do that much for the Monkey King, a little bit for the Medusa with the Mystic Snake. Tarfus continuing to farm down here, going to get his blink fairly soon. Speaking of blinks, change of heart a ways away yet. Radiance Middle Tower may need a hand. Fav sitting in the trees, waiting in the wings. They might try to go on to this lichen, but need to be cautious. Clammy is here. They see him with this ward, so they're aware that they're not alone. Retman, though, could be in trouble. He might just die, and Fav actually is going to jump away and try to run as Retman gets beat down and unceremoniously killed off. Or will he? He's alive for now. A nice fissure. Looks like he gets away just barely with his life. Great fissure from Change of Heart. Monkey King looking for more. They might try to find something to bail. Connects onto Control. Control also caught in that Dream Coil. Silence and a beautiful Echo Slam onto two of them. Stone Gate just to be saved. Bound the strike. Cancels the, the transformation. No, he's still alive. The arrow will it follow. And Spectrum with a dominating spree. Ravenfly overextending. Trying to find an Ogre kill and end up losing. Uh, the Lycan and the Brewmaster in the process. Extending Medusa's lead a little bit. She's now at uh, 9k net worth. We'll have a Dragon Lance before too long, but they need to be mindful of this bot lane. Tidehunter TP's out. It, uh, I don't know if they can win fights with Tidehunter there. Uh, he has a mech. The Ravage, of course. A great Echo Slam, by the way, from Change of Heart, who has played very, very well on this Shaker so far. The mid does get claimed by Trigon's PL, though. Change of heart. Fissure in a few seconds. Maybe they look for something. Heroes are rotating towards but Puck not in the area, and he's most of their catch. Six snake coming out, bouncing around, and he jumps up to the high ground on Trigon. Gonna farm up this jungle a little bit. Shaker spotted out by him. He needs to be careful now. Has to do Spirit Lance, throws it forward. The Fissure does keep Trigon in place for a while. 14 seconds on that doppelganger as well. Snake available. Bane is here though. Pops the Nightmare onto the Ogre and Trigon just tries to walk it off. Puck is here though. Has the Dream Quill. It does connect onto Trigon. Five seconds. That Quill snaps in trouble. The Silence does lash and they will find that Phantom Lancer. Now they're turning their attention to Maple Monkey. They can get in range. He does have a Fire Blast available and they just keep the pursuit going. Mystic Snake gonna come out. Illusory Orb won't connect but it does allow Puck to get closer and another wonderful Fissure. And they find two more heroes. Divinity starting to make up for their mistakes and Fab on the run. Keeps going. Fire Fist looking for him. The question mark. Clammy throwing out a clap. Doesn't find anything just yet. Doesn't have any way to cut down trees either. And Fav hangs out in the trees, laughing himself to the bank. And he TPs away. Sob continues farming. Radiance Bottom Tower has uninvited guests. Split. Oh, canceled. Just spamming it. Likes to hear Brewmaster's sensual voice, I think. Radiance Bottom Tower has a nasty situation. I feel like alcoholics. Tidehunter blinking forward has a Ravage, hasn't committed it just yet. Spectrum survives for the time guests. being. Meanwhile, Puck split it, pushing the bot lane. Does have a TP, but has no mana for it. Now Ping's coming out. Radiance bottom tower. Reward here, spotting people out. The defusal blade on PL, not yet complete, but on the way. Mystic Snake going to bounce, get some mana back for the Medusa. Radiance bottom tower. And they claim the tier one tower thanks to the puck. Firefist ignited. Spectrum jumping forward, throwing out another Mystic Snake. Gets onto Clammy, and that should get him to full mana. They need to be cautious. 
Tied with a blink, with a Ravage, could catch these three heroes with the people. They have to follow up. He jumps forward, catches all three inside that Ravage. The split coming out. The life shapes as well. The Medusa gets her ult off just in time. And now the Mystic Sink is trying to full man in. A nice stun now. The Echo Slam coming in, but not doing any damage because they're caught in the Stone Gaze. But now the Bounder Strike lays on three heroes. Mad Monkey gonna go down. Control on the run. Puck trying to chase him down. The Dream Quilt does latch. Control. A wolf on a leash. He's got nowhere to go. He's running around in circles, chasing his own tail, and he dies. Four heroes dead. They just lose the Shaker. Flawless execution and a beautiful counter engage coming from Divinity. And I must say, quite a divine execution of that yeah. of that fight. And I mean, the only unfortunate thing was that the Shaker ult did nothing because of the Stone Gaze. But Medusa able to get that Stone Gaze off just in time. And that Ravage was really, really good, but the follow-up not quite Ravage there. They don't get the Bruce split off, and they get the Bruce split off, the Spirits just die. All get caught in the Stone Gaze, and now they claim a Tier 1 tower, and suddenly the Gold Grab in favor very heavily of Divinity. And as this game goes later, they're against the Medusa, and I'm not sure that they can kill her. They have a Diffusal Blade on PL, but he's ha almost half the net worth of Medusa. Soft. Playing well on this puck, too. A nice Dream Coil to catch that Lycan and find another big kill. That was four heroes dead. Don't know if they can get. It looks like they are turning to Roche. Ravage is on cooldown, and they have Dream Coil up, and Medusa Stone Gaze will be up soon as well. Without that Ravage, their team fight very, very weak. It's all single target. They do have Fiend's Grip available, so they might want to be cautious. Phantom Lancers are trying to scout these Lycan Wolves. They know Roche is happening. It's like this is where the next fight will occur. They're sending in PL Illusions to try to be a tease, try to burn down mana. Some of these heroes tied, jumps forward, has them. That can get caught in that bound to strike Medusa. Be careful, she jumps away. Puck with a beautiful Dream Call on three heroes. The Silence as well. And now Medusa pops her Stone Gaze, just turns her attention to these other heroes. They lose the Ogre Magi already, though. Firefish just sitting around, trying to get away from this Medusa. Wants to stay in the fight, though. Bound the Strike on cooldown. The Gush gonna come out. Spectrum needs to be cautious. There's out a Mystic Snake. Does some good damage. Kills off some stuff. A double kill for Trigon, though. Finds out the Puck. And now Medusa and Fab, they need to get out of here. Fab needs to jump away. He does manage to get it off just in time. Well, they find him. He keeps jumping. He needs to get away from here. And a good fight for the Radiant. They kill two supports, and oh, they need to make sure they don't cut down his trees. Spectrum getting gone on by Tragen. Tragen has the damage with that Diffusal Blade. The Bounder Strike not going to connect. Snake going to bounce around, but not onto the PL. So we're not get that much mana back to multicast onto him, though. And he doesn't have his, his abilities are all on cooldown. The jump forward, the Primal Spring. He gets crushed by the Pet Monkey King. Fab with a dominating streak. It's about a horrible start. Now doing very well and catching up in that net worth. Tragon going a little bit too deep. A favorable fight for them. Still, though, creating space for Roshan. Do they know that this is happening? Monkey King's going towards it. He has a Boundless Strike available. And he turns into a Courier. Throws out the Boundless Strike. Doesn't catch anything. Just some Wolves. And now the jump forward onto Clammy. Clammy with the Echo Slam coming out. But the Wolf. Uh, looks like he's going to be able to TP out. Clammy will escape and change up heart Echo Slam for nothing. And they were a little bit too slow getting to that Roshan. Tragon, despite dying there, maybe an unnecessary death, did create space for them to go for that Roshan, which will allow them to fight a little bit better. Nightmare available on Mad Monkey. He shouldn't have that much to fear. Fab, once again, missing the bound the strike. Crap should be used to that by now. Jump forward from Change of Heart. There's out a Fissure. It connects onto the Bane. Spectrum can use the Pursuit, doing a lot of damage with his right clicks. Pops the Mask of Madness. Wants to get the Bane, but no. Backs off. Blinded by the Brewmaster. Slowed down as well. Probably not going to be able to find that kill there. Meanwhile, Control. With his Necro 3 completed. Hummel the Dominator. It's a lot of damage with his Creep Army. Fab going to be going for a Shadow Blade. A lot of his damage right now coming from the Jinku Mastery. Has the attack speed talent as well. Meanwhile, Medusa, speaking of talents, goes for the damage and the Mystic Snake mana. I prefer that talent a lot. Increases survivability significantly. You drain the mana of heroes like Tidehunter, who, while he's pretty resistant to normal CC, gets really, really, just like Kraken shells off everything. A nice Ravage onto three heroes. Will they be able to follow it up? They have to clap the Stone Gaze coming out. The Boundless, the Wukong's command as well. Pop with the Dream Coil onto two heroes. They need to be careful. Firefish snaps his own coil and getting right clicked by, Spr by uh, Spectrum. Spectrum not able to finish him off just yet. The Primal Sweat comes off just in time. Fiend's Grip onto the Puck, but it cancels immediately by a Fire Blast. And now they're going on a change of heart. Now it looks like Chain Heart will go down to Trigon, but Soft finds off, finds the uh, Bane. And now going on to the Medusa. Medusa needs to get out of here. She has no mana left in her tank. And Fab himself also going to go down, gets killed by Control. Spectrum, Ogre, and uh oh, Puck trying to get out of here. He's on to Clammy, but I don't think he has the damage. He needs to jump away, but no, he's not going to. Now he's phase shifts, but everything's on cooldown. He will go down here, loses all of his mana, and gets beat to death. And Ogre, uh-oh, oh, he might just get this jump, trying to TP out from the Ogre. Ogre will just be able to get away, and now Soft on the run, so they still only lose the two. Fav and Change are going to die. A favorable fight, indeed, for Ravenflight. 
little bit scattered, and they weren't quite able to make the most out of that uh, Monkey Wukong command. Oh, they might find Soft. His blink off cooldown in one second. He needs to get it off and just into the trees. And maybe they finally stop chasing, but they might find a bigger target. Mystic Snake coming out, stealing quite a lot of mana. Going to get her back to full. Increase her takiness by a bit. Likely to get the 700 mana talent. Soft TPing away while Fav TPs in. Going to use his Tree Dance to find some information. Mystic Snake coming out. Oh, they need to be careful. They have some people behind them. Slow, under control. Control does have that Aegis, though they don't have a Rad. Not for a minute. Dank Smash going to come out. The Fissure will connect on Mad Monkey. And they do find the Bane already. Control in the trees alone. The Jingu Mastery Monkey King going to start beating on him. The Boundless Strike coming out. Does a lot of damage, so he does die, but he does have another life. He doesn't have any mobility items. No Force Staffs, no Blink Daggers. So it will likely cost his life. The Multi, or the Fire Strike, or Fire Blast. And now Chant Totem. And a Wicked Six Streak. For this Medusa, who's ma who just now finishes her Lincoln Sphere. Meaning no Fiend's Grip, no Nightmare. Eh, maybe one, but not the other. Although you can pop it with the Brain Sap. A decent Gold Swing. They find two nice kills. And also claim that Aegis will probably be able to take this Tier 2 Tower and continue building their Gold Need as the game goes on. Net Worth, or er, XP, also very much in Divinity's favor. Situation. And this Medusa at 14k net worth, Puck at 9, and Monkey King at 6, so he's the poorest core, not counting off laners. Actually, he is the poorest core, counting off laners. So, Fav having a not fantastic game, his Shadow Blade is done, Soft in mid, getting some right clicks onto that tower, but we'll blink away from Clam, he doesn't want to risk anything. But they might make a play. They might go on to Clammy. He has the Primal Split, but a Silence could be all the time that they need. That Puck Silence duration is... Do -do -do. Three seconds. That could be plenty of time to kill him. But they're playing cautious. A nice ward here will provide some uphill vision. Uh, Divinity have their own ward to scout things out. Puck jumping forward. No one's there, though. Does cut the wave and blinks away. Ravage is available. They need to be careful. But a DD rune on Spectre may encourage them to make some risky plays. A smoke onto a couple here as Revan Smoke immediately breaks in the trees. First Shaker looking for something. I don't know if they see that PL. It's not real. They see the real one right there. Ghoul. Lincoln's broken, and now they're just peeing away at this tower. Tied with the Ravage available. Might be able to get a good one off. Soft lurking in the wings. Wants to try to prevent that from happening. Wants to get his own engaged. Dodge the Spirit Lance, and the Tier 2 Radiant tower does die. Blue, claim it for nothing. Will there be a counter engage? It's very risky to engage. A clap forward. They're going on to Retman. Retman trying to TP away. Force staff to safety by his team. Puck going in. Has an orb. Launches it forward. And doesn't jump to it. Knows better than that. And Monkey King, Fav, jumps away. And they quickly disengage and head towards the top lane. But this Tier 2 is... Dead. Fortification coming out, and they just need to try to clear these up, but it, it probably is a little too late. The Radiant will play in that tower, but Spectrum farms up a bunch of Necro Creeps, so he's pretty happy about that, I think. Puck gets a Dream Coil under control. Oh, once again, this dog on at least, he doesn't know what to do. Just let him go, but a nice silence. However, the Coil does end. The Fissure will latch onto him. His Shapeshift has a while left. A nice Echo Sam continuing the chase, so trying to get him down, and he does eventually go down. The Wishing Snake finishes him off. Now they're going after Clammy. Clammy does have the split available. Team Radiant are on the way to try to find him. They know that Clammy's there. Do they have the Tidehunter? He's still in the mid. They don't have him. And a TP away from Clammy to safety. But they still lose that Lycan. He gets a tier 2 tower, so a little bit of gold for his team. But still struggling very badly to kind of find clean objectives, clean kills. Uh, they always seem to lose something. Is getting walloped. And now this tier 2 tower getting beat down on or walloped as my most beloved Trine announcer claims. Radiance Phantom Manager down. picking up the Agonim Scepter trying to shore up some of their weaknesses in this team fight. The Bouncing Spirit Lance also makes an, an army of illusions as well with the Diffusal that you can control. I like this. I like this guy. <laughs> I hope he's. I hope he like accidentally eats it. Oh, it's boozing buddies. I thought he said my bosom buddies, and I was like, that's a weird thing to say about yourself. Kaya now bought on an Earthshaker. Interesting pickup. Uh, not a lot of spammable spells. His mana problems aren't that severe. Tidehunter now with the Guardian creeps completed. Spectrum, Lincoln's is done, going to be going for an Eye of Scotty, can already buy the first ultimate orb, and pretty close to buying that second one as well. Once he gets that, going to be very difficult, has that 700 mana talent as well, so things are 
it's hard to kill this Medusa. With the Necro Creeps, with the PL Diffusal, they might be able to do it. But it's still really hard. Soft spotted out. Gush not going to connect. And Ogre farming up Ancients. Four Staff. His next item. Roshan may respawn in about 35 seconds. So we'll see what his real respawn is before too long now. Medusa continuing to pull ahead. Both of our ultimate orbs done. We'll soon have that completed Eye of Scotty, making her very difficult to kill. And up top, Fab with that Shadow Blade looking for something. Needs to be cautious. He's pinging stuff out, but looks like it's more of a scouting maneuver than a kill attempt. <sighs> Monkey King just trying to farm up here. Going for that Silver Edge. Dire scan. They see someone's at this Ancient. Fab needs to be cautious. This Invis Tidehunter scouting him out. They may make a play on him. He needs to get out of here. He needs to get out of here soon. Anchor Smash cancels the ability to blink. He pops a Shadow Blade. Dust immediately. Clap not going to connect. He's on the run. He gets the Primal Spring off. Or a Tree Dance. Oh no! He stayed in the tree for too long! I can't believe that actually just happened! The Fissure coming in. The Echo Slam though! Beautiful! And now the Stone Gate's coming in. They're trying to save Fab. But a nice uh, Primal Spring coming out. The Ravage also going to connect on three heroes. But a bunch of people already stunned from that Medusa Stone Gate. The Dream Pole also going to connect. Fire Fist going, getting low. PL still alive for the time being, but he actually gets himself down to the low ground. That's not where he wants to be. The right blast, right click will finish him off. Godlike on Spectrum. Puck very low. It's just the Medusa now. It's pretty much just her against the world. They get the stun off. Now they're trying to do whatever they can. Spectrum continues fighting. He throws up the Mystic Snake, keeping his mana up for as much as he can. Clammy trying to get that blind, but it's not going to work. But now Spectrum getting beat down by this Illusion Army. He doesn't have anything. The Multicast not going to connect on anything real. It's just onto an Illusion. And Spectrum will finally, maybe seemingly, perhaps die of control, chasing him down. The Wolf wants a snakeskin bag. No, they keep going. The Phantom Rush is going to find him. And Spectrum four steps himself away. I don't see how he gets out of this one alive. He's trying to juke through the Roche Pit. He's actually still alive, but no, they juke over the wall. They find him. The Diffuse will pop by his Lincoln. He picks up a bounty. We're doing whatever he can. Actually buys out is Scotty maybe? No, not quite. Not that fast. And he will finally, finally die. Probably. Yes. One more right click. And they do get this Medusa after an incredibly long time. If he were a real pro, uh, a real pro he would have bought out his Eye of Scotty. <laughs> Got himself some of that mana. Uh, but no, a very huge kill on that Medusa by itself. 1,200 gold swing. 1,700 gold swing, I should say. A good effort from Blue trying to save their team, but they just get bullied just down by a uh, Ravage, a really great Ravage. Fire Fist Ravage have been really, really good, and unfortunately, the bulk of the damage seems to be coming from this Medusa. And when they can control her down like that, perhaps the BKB would be beneficial, then they don't have a lot of damage. Fab was also stunned for pretty much the whole fight. He got his tree cut down. The Dream Coil was pretty lackluster from Soft as well. It only connected on a couple Bruce Spirits as the one is Magic Immune and I think one hero, maybe the PL, he was right where you needed to be caught. That's some harass, does have a Dream Coil available and just jaunts away. So some nice harass, trying to keep these wave clears. The Ignite gonna connect on a bunch of heroes. Fab cancels his right click. Puck waiting in the back, could get a big Dream Coil. He doesn't get anything though, just cuts the wave and uh oh, he needs to be careful. His blink is on cooldown. They're looking for Soft. Soft needs to phase shift. They haven't found him just yet, but now they know where he is. He has a Yules as well. Yules is himself. One second, he can blink away. He jumps. And oh, a nice Echo Slam! They just were baited into that for so long, and now the Boundless Strike coming up. They stun the PL. The PL Trigan getting extremely little Ignite. Gonna spread out a bunch of these heroes. Big Monkey already dead. Another Boundless Strike. Another Multicast coming out. Out of control. Control. Able to run away, but it's a double kill for Fab already. They lost their heroes so quickly, and oh no. They might find more. The Earthshaker blinks, but no, he blinks the wrong way. Control. Should be able to get out of this firefight, uh, fire fist already. But man, what a bait from uh, Soft. Just a massive Echo Slam. Let's look at this fight recap, the damage the Earthshaker did. Almost 5k damage from that Shaker. That Echo Slam, just unbelievably huge. And they massacre Raven fight in no time flat. I don't even think Medusa was in that fight. They just got eaten alive by magical burst from the Echo and the Puck. BKB now bought to try to remedy that kind of thing from happening again on control. We'll also snap some coils safely, but uh, soft thinking about that. Going to be going for an Aghanim Scepter, and if control's not careful, he could find himself dead. Roshan back alive, so really great timing for uh, Divinity as he turned that uh, really successful fight into a Roshan. Ravage is available, so if they're quick, they might be able to contest this Roshan dying very, very quickly. They don't have Phantom Lancer, and their team fight outside of the Ravage really isn't that impressive. The PL also actually a pretty big part of the team fight. Um, they're scouting. 
They have a smoke. But nice dream curl to zone them away. Soft doing a lot of work keeping them away. Really great play, and they do get that Aegis onto Fab. The split from Clammy. Clammy wants to find something that might actually just lose himself. Soft, meanwhile, over here being a huge pain, and these Brew Spirits are going to die. The one's invisible, the Phantom Lancer has a life, but he needs to get away from here. And now Puck getting Fiend's Grip and Will. Yules himself has a phase shift as well, pops it, and might be able to blink away. No, he doesn't pop the blink in time and will go down. So they lose the Puck, get the Aegis, though. And it looks like they're looking for more Fab in the area. Stone Gaze coming out to found the strike, going to get the Brewmaster low. Brewmaster will die. Fab himself getting low, though. He does have the Aegis. PL jumping forward. Tregan for into dodge. A beautiful Ravage onto three heroes. And now Bane's here as well. A nice Echo Slam getting PL so low. He basically dies just to the Echo Slam. Phantom Lancer now on the run, though. The Moon Kong's command coming out. Control needs to get away from this. Tregan's still alive, but maybe they'll find him. No, he's getting away for the time being. They're pinging out where they think he is, but it looks like he will survive. That echo was massive, but unfortunately, Nightmare on the Medusa. Great play from, uh, was it Suit? Uh, Maple Monkey. Keeping himself, keeping the Medusa unable to follow up on that. What a huge echo. Almost killing the PL and the tiny Tide by himself. Meanwhile, Control safe. pushing. Wants to go in onto Retman. Retman needs to be careful. And actually just going to tunnel this tier 3 tower, fortification popped. And that's how they might win this game. The split push is very strong. Could do this all day. Fav starting to catch up a little. He's only 2k gold now behind the, um, not Phantom they Master, still the Lycan. Going for a BKB as well, and I, I think Medusa should get one after her butterfly. Uh, save her from that Ravage, just let her keep, and like also from uh, Nightmare. Fiend's Grip, of course, does pure spell immunity, but we'll help her against the Nightmare. It's like I have to message some people soon. <laughs> Soft wants to get that Ags. Help the Dream Quill quite a lot. Not level 25, so it doesn't have the dank GPM talent. But still farming rather nicely. But this Medusa is so far ahead on net worth. 7k, almost 8k ahead of... Actually, is about 8k ahead of this Lycan. So things are looking rough. Spectrum getting huge. And this Medusa only going to get bigger. She has a couple more items that she could buy to capitalize on. May eventually get rid of that Mask of Madness. Retman. Fifteen fits the ninety damage talent. Has his golden on as well. The blood that's attack speed at level twenty is what I suspect he'll get, and it'll be really good on this Medusa and really good on this Monkey King. Is see how much is that? So it goes from thirty to ninety. That's basically a moon shard. Pink's coming out. Fab picks up that regen room. Dust just to be safe and a stomp as well, but he's not there. Gemetry side now picked up by Clammy to avoid any such shenanigans in the future. I mean, that was his sentry ward. Nice ward here, spotting out Medusa Spectrum. Hasn't bought anything yet. Maybe want to save for buyback since there is a Lycan they're up against. And PL as well also pushes rather fast. We need to be cautious. It's Medusa. I mean, we saw how long it took. And she's sitting on a cheese. If they don't almost perfectly CC her and she eats that cheese, it's as good as an Aegis for her. PL going to push the lanes out with his Ag's Spirit Lance, going for an Orchid as his next item. Butterfly completed on him already as well. So Phantom Lancer doing a significant chunk of damage to these enemy heroes. But we shall see how they hold out once the game gets ultra late. A six-slotted Medusa is legendarily uh, dangerous. Bane trying to get a blink dagger. Butterfly ah, now finished on the Medusa. She disassembles her Mask of Madness to finish it. That's pretty standard stuff. PLT being back bot might want to try to go on Fab. Fab goes out of bounds. The strike may need to get out of here. Has his, spirit, uh, yeah, has his shadow, Silver Edge and does slip away. He's now in hiding and control. I don't think you'll be able to find him. BKB now finished on Fab. But oh, where is Fab? He TP out, he TP out.
Boots of Travel now done on the Phantom Lancer. We'll help him deal with the split push as well as dish out some split push of his own. Neither team has claimed a tier 3 or a lane of barracks yet here at the 38th mark. But a 12k gold lead still slowly mounting for Divinity and XP much more in their favor even. Shaker may look to use this Echo Slam, the 91 second cooldown Echo Slam. Try to maximize the use of that arcane ring but probably not going to be given that opportunity his team pretty spread out needs to be careful he doesn't run into anybody on the other side as well clammy with the gem cutting down random trees maybe trying to find a monkey king himself could be in trouble could feed away that gem pink's coming out he sees him and now he needs to get away he gets the blink off he's out of there but control still in the trees Lycan TPing back to base now. Not going to find anything with their scan. Roshan may respawn in a couple minutes, so we'll find that out fairly soon. Pipe of Insight now finished on the Tidehunter. We'll see how much that really helps against the Medusa. The Shiva's Guard, his next item, will probably be much more significant. Puck with the Ags completed, going to be a really big item in this next fight, will be potentially game ending against this Lycan, who, if he's unawares of the Ags, may just snap that coil and be stunned for 5 seconds, that's basically the duration of his BKB. You'll have 4 seconds of it left, assuming he doesn't use it on you during your BKB. But Phantom Knights are able to shove out these waves pretty quickly. Gonna get the crit talent at level 25, making him a very, very scary late game contender. Haste rune top, arcane rune bot. Haste. Shaker grabbing that haste, running towards the arcane rune at bot. Grabbing the move speed talent. Probably gonna get, I would imagine he goes the echo damage, even though I think the fissure range is usually better in this situation against the phantom lancer i would use the echo damage now control trying to shape shift fab doesn't really want to man fight this the fissure going to come out jump forward there's an echo slam available i don't know if he wants to use it. force out the bkb and that should be plenty but now there's one here rabbit's going to connect onto three heroes and now they're going on a fab fab trying to get the wukong to man out but it doesn't matter he's going to die before he's able to do anything before he gets the jingu off to heal him and now an attempt to tp but a fiend script to cancel from maple monkey they've already lost three down here overextending fighting right underneath the shrine allowing the uh, allowing Raven Fight to TP in and put them down pretty quickly. They did force out a B. If they could have escaped after forcing out that BKB, it would have been fairly worth it for them. But as it stands, a 3k gold swing favoring the Radiant. Gold. Ravage was committed, so two minutes left until that next Ravage. They're pinging out. They used Fiend Script as well, so Medusa not in any serious danger, I don't think, without the Fiend Script. Because uh, that's pretty much all of their CC. Puck just gonna split push. Tragen gonna TP back now. Tier 3 tower. The first tier 3 tower to fall. Fortification comes out a little bit late. Mystic Snake not gonna bounce to anybody. Guardian Greaves popped, and now they're gonna turn to these shrines. And that one little slip up at the bot lane opening the game up quite a bit for the Radiant. Pretty significant gold jump for them. It was about 4k now, and now they can get shrines, which closes off a lot of the map. And especially if they get this top shrine, Roshan will be much more difficult to contest. And Roshan is up in about a minute and 40 seconds. So uh, Divinity may have to think about that. Oh, oh my God. The gem still up on Clammy PL now completing his Orchid. May try to use that on something like the Puck. Puck does have a Lincoln's though and a Yule's to purge it off. Uh, if he goes on the Medusa, if she's already got her Stone Gaze off, I don't think it matters. Not to mention she does have cheese, so I don't think she cares. She's going to be going for a Heart of Tarask, or maybe that's a Satanic. No, that's a Satanic. Lifesteal, tankiness, fine item for Medusa. Yeah, now level 25, got the split shot using the modifier, so you got that AoE Scotty. Illusion. Illusion rune on Medusa, how frustrating. 
Roshan not up yet, not for 40 seconds. Tragen split pushing up at the top lane with his uh, illusion army. Pings coming out, Clammy going after this illusion. Assault Kuras now completed on the Lycan as well. Bound the strike used by Fav to push in a, lay a wave. He's going for a butterfly. Bound the strike crit as his next item choice. Or er, his next talent, I should say. Level 25, I prefer the 100 armor. Especially this game where it's like all physical damage you have to worry about. Because then you're basically immune to physical damage. Or you take a lot less. And then you can just man up against people with your Jingu stacks. And just kind of wreck people. Now Bloodthorn completed on the Phantom Lancer. That's going to be a frightening item for people to deal with. Unless they have some way to remove it themselves. And Nullifier will be Tragen's next item. The Nullifier, of course, will prevent Medusa from doing really much of anything. Uh, if you stack that with the Bloodthorn, then that's like permanent lockdown. They, someone needs to save them from it. Both teams are aware now that Roshan is up. Looks like Dyer are making a try for it. Ravage is available. They need to be very, very careful. This could be a disastrous fight if they're not cautious. Everybody knows that this is up. There is an Arcane Rune available as well. Fab and Spectrum in the pit. Spectrum grabbing that Arcane Rune. Things coming out. Puck trying to buy some time. Soft going to face shift away. They're going on to this Roshan. Soft going to blink away. Throws out the Illusory Orb. Gets out of there. Fire Fist has a blink. Ravage can easily get in the pit. They have the vision. Ravage comes out. It connects onto two heroes, three heroes. Fab already getting very, very low. Not enough. Not able to get that scream off. A beautiful Echo Slam coming out though. Soft with the Dream Coil. And another sun's coming out. The Stone Gaze coming out now. Control. They're trying to burst down Spectrum, but he's too tanky. Now the Stone Gaze setting them up. The Ignite going to come out. Fire Fist getting very, very low. It looks like they will find him. Dragon trying to stay out of this fight for as long as he can. Soft still full HP as well. Medusa still alive. Earth Shaker going to go down. Fab going to buy it buy back. Spectrum continuing pursuit, getting hit by that Nullifier as well as the Bloodthorn. But actually, looks like he blocked one of them. He's trying to fight. He are, he eats the cheese. Still alive for the time being, but he's by himself. There's really nothing there to help him. Spectrum, a nice suck from Fab. And it looks like they might be able to get that Wukong's man coming out. They're trying to keep the fight going. They have the silence. It's not enough though. She's taking too much damage. Spectrum will finally die. Buyback available. Tragen still alive. So is Control. Now it's just Fav inside his Wukong command. Needs to be careful. Tragen getting low in the Fissure. Not coming out yet, but now Disconnect. Tragen might actually die now. He's still alive for the time being. They do see him. They miss him with the Enchant Totem. And now Clap coming out from Clammy. Tragen still alive. Unbelievably so. Now the Orb coming out. They pop the Shrine trying to keep themselves healthy. They're going after Clammy. Clammy getting very, very low. He jumps forward. One more right click and they do get it. Tragen still alive for the time being, but maybe not for long. The Fissure going to come out, but not going to connect onto Tragen. Tragen getting hit by that Dream Coil though could be dangerous. Lots of crit though. He's doing so much damage. Fav might want to get out of here. Soft. Needs to get away. The Dream Coil. Oh, but he snaps his own coil. He breaks his neck on it. And now Puck getting jumped on by control. Uses himself. Trying to buy himself whatever time he can. Face shifts away and can blink and he's gone. And Fab hiding in the trees. And a jump away from the Puck. A very interesting fight. But overall does favor that rather heavily uh, Raven flight as two buybacks were expended and they killed that ever so valuable Medusa and PL now caught up in that net worth. And now Roshan going to be the objective control with his creep army and the help of Maple Monkey able to just clean that Roshan up. This is not just the cheese, but the refresher shard as well. Sight device now bought though on the puck and there's no BKB on this Phantom Lancer. The gem recovered. Haste. And Fab running away from this Tidehunter. He has a jump now. Staying hidden. Needs to jump away. Gets caught by that Gush. Has a BKB if he really desperately needs it. Trying to jump. They spot him. The dust not revealing him. And he keeps jumping away. So with that Medusa death, that's her second death the whole game. Spectrum looking to buy some defensive items that Satanic going to help this it's a uh, creepy but needs to save for that buyback this game turned around completely in a very short time as the uh, raven fight went a significant fight forcing out several buybacks from uh, divinity I don't know why it keeps breaking like that. She has her Claymore bot, can buy the Reaver. She might just buy it, but I don't know if I appreciate that very much. The Refresher Shard dropped on the ground, uh, giving it to either the Lycan or probably just give it to the Tide. Yeah, you need that double Ravage. With the double Ravage, she's going to be very, very strong, so that's something you need to be careful about. But Medusa, again, no BKB. I would really like to see one, uh, but right now she's six slotted. She can just buy a Moon Shard, but if she dies and they don't kill a bunch of people, the game is over. Tragen, though, not the one with the Aegis, so perhaps could be okay. Monkey 
Yugi King, level 23. He's so far behind. He's so poor. Fav, his damage pretty limited, but he does provide a bit of utility with some of his tree dance vision. The Wukong's command kind of discourages people from pursuing, and he's got that utility, but he still needs to be so, so he's careful. And speaking of, there's a gem on somebody. I believe it's the Brew still. He's going for a Radiance very late in the game, but the dodge chance is going to be nice. Fav split pushing needs to be careful. If he gets caught, he doesn't have a B, uh, he doesn't have a TP, and he does he already bought back. He's trying to TP out. If he cuts down that tree, he could be in trouble, but he's able to get away. He joins up with his team, and they may look like they might try to smoke. There's no smoke on anyone though. Medusa needing to farm up for that buyback. She's a ways away. Soft has his buyback and is buying moon shards for his teammates. It looks like. Uh, I really like that play. Has pretty much everything he wants. Picked up a moon shard. Probably gonna. I would give it to the Medusa first. And yep, he does give it to that Medusa. He now has a double damage rune. And now they're TPing up to the top. It looks like a push maybe coming in. They have an Aegis. They have a cheese. And they have a, a double Ravage in the tank. Teams playing very cautiously, although definitely the advantage going to the Radiant right now. However, if they're found without their Lycan, things could turn on a dime. Stop looking for whatever he can find. The smoke will break and goes up a little further. They see this Tide Hunter. They get the silence onto him. They're trying to burst him down. He has a Ravage available. He's out of mana. He, goes, he has the cheese, but he does die before he can get that Ravage off. And now they're pursuing. They get the Hex on to, on to Clammy. Clammy getting set up, trying to get the final split off. The Echo Slam going to miss on everything, but now... They should be able to kill these Brew Spirits. They've just turned onto them. Trigan trying to fight this, but I don't know if that's a good idea. He needs to be very cautious. The Brew Spirits trying to run away. He's trying to escape from this, but now Trigan himself in serious trouble. He's silenced and he's dead. They find two heroes. A quick cleanup. Seeing that Lycan disappear means it's time to fight, but now they're trying to TP back. They need to stop this Lycan. Lycan going after the, going after their buildings, and they will retreat. Brewmaster does survive, but his ult was forced out. Even though they killed that Tide, it does mean Double Ravage still available. Fissure onto him, they're trying to control it, continue chaining the stun up, they get the Hex on him, and he's very fast little piggy, and he will escape. There is no Dream Coil, and the Yules is an option, but I don't know that they'll be able to get it on him, and he's gone. Battle Fury now finished up on Fab, we'll let him push waves, get some cleave damage done, and the team fights as well, and they may make a push onto this tier 3. It's very, very low, Tragen, no buyback available, but Double Ravage will be up in about 10 seconds, but Spectrum is so tanky, he looks like he's just going to take this up. They get the blind, but no, it's actually eaten by the Lincoln, and this tier 3 will almost certainly die as Wukong pushes out the bot lane. Jump forward, a nice stun, they're going in onto this, onto this Brewmaster, Brewmaster getting very, very low, and he will die. Sleep onto the Earthshaker. Tidehunter is up. There is a double Ravage buyback off from the Brew. There is 30 seconds without Tragen. Their highest damage. The first lane of Rax, despite losing their tier 3 very early, it is claimed by Divinity. And suddenly, again, the gold plummeting in favor of Divinity. And XP evening up, but still in favor of Divinity. And now Monkey King trying desperately to catch up, but he's 7,000 gold behind the Lycan. And the only bright side, I think, for Radia is Medusa doesn't get any stronger than she is right now. She is going for an MKB. I suspect she might get rid of her phase boots. That's the only thing I could think. Because she has that butterfly. So she might get rid of it. Uh, may get rid of the Hurricane Pike as well, but I think she kind of needs that. Eh, maybe not. And one lead of barracks, of course, at 52 minutes is utterly meaningless. But an Abyssal Blade now bought on that like in an added layer of control. <laughs> Travel 2's on the puck. Able to TP to his teammates if anyone gets jumped. Try to save him, try to help him out. Nothing will stand in my way. DD rune on Fav. He may be looking for someone. He might find a valuable target, but I don't know if by himself he can handle Tragen. Tragen, frightening to deal with. He jumps into the trees. I think he might have been spotted. No. He's jumping around. And Ping's coming out. They're continuing to shove in the mid lane. Medusa does have her buyback available now. Fav picks up a bounty rune. Did go for the 100 armor in the Wukong's command. 
vision yeah. coming out on the tide hunter illusion anyway and they do kill that that disgusting illusion a prize. Behold. puck with a billion gold a minute uh, I think he's just gonna get a moon shard for his teammate and then maybe I don't know something else. It's like they get the orchid onto him he has the yules get the blood thorn onto him and he Blinks away has the jaunt. He should be able to get out of this phases and blinks away. He should be in the safe. He should be safe now. I don't think they want to chase across the river at the moment. Shaker with the 50 echo damage. They're being scouted out by all of this army of lichen wolves. Ooh, a dream coil coming out onto the Bane. Bane pops his glimmer cape. Isn't this for the time? Gets stunned by both the coil and the bound the strike, but they don't know where he is. He's hidden. And he might just be able to TP away. They find him. Maple Monkey found by Fab. Fab going in onto him. They're trying to get him. Will he get away? No, the Fissure cancels. And the Yule also, just for good measure, and he's beat down by Soft. So Bane dead, but they did commit their Dream Coil. Dream Coil cooldown. Not that long, though. Meanwhile, Lycan continues pushing up into these side lanes. With the three wolves, the Howl, the Feral Impulse, and AC, and this incredibly rapid push. But will they be able to outpush all five heroes? Double Ravage, again, still in the tank. They have to be so cautious going up to high ground, especially against this Lycan, who is continuing to split push. BKB is up onto the Monkey King. Bottom tower has a nice that away. Situation. Trying to keep the shove going, but Lycan soon will be there at their tier three. Tragen TPing in. Radiance bottom Spectrum, tower ready to tank. One Ravage already done. He refreshed shards. He pops the second one. It's getting ready. They're just stunned for so long, but Stonegaze is able to get off this time, so he does get that stun upon everybody. Now starting the auto attack spam. Gets his BKB off through Kong's command. He's pretty much invulnerable inside this thing. Tragen getting very, very low, getting right quick by Spectrum. Sock gets the Dream Call on him. He should be able to snap it freely, but no, he's low. He's, he's in the danger zone. The top racks get claimed by Control. Control trying to find whatever he can to save his teammates. The Grief. And Tragen will die. He does have buyback available, and it looks like he may be forced to use it. Meanwhile, Control just going to clean the base up. He's doing so much damage, and now they're going in. They find the Bane, and they find the Earthshaker as well. Tidehunter are going to go down. Buyback available on him. Spectrum still alive. Doesn't have any mana available, though. They're trying to get this, and now a bunch of TPs. Massing P Spectrum trying to continue to fight, but he needs to be careful going against this. Mad Monkey is here, has the Fiend's Grip as well. Looks like he is going to pop. He's trying to get control and control able to get away, but they get up so many lanes of racks from this. And Spectrum just gets devoured by this PL army. The Lycan just pushes so fast with his uh, creep army, and it's just a very favorable trade. <laughs> they get that 40k net worth Medusa, 30k net worth Puck, 30k net worth Mana Lancer, 30k net worth uh, Lycan, and it's just such a rough game. The only reason I think they come out on top of that is that they force Tragen's buyback. Desolator now bought by Lycan to ensure that he can push even faster. Uh, fortification on cooldown for five minutes, four minutes really. So they know they they now know they need to kill that lichen as soon as they can. And the only benefit is there won't be the double ravage. If there isn't the double ravage, I think that fight goes a lot better for Divinity. Monkey King has a sacred relic. We'll see what he goes for. Could go for that divine rapier, but I don't think he's a very good carrier for it. it could, I I wouldn't be surprised to see a rapier on this Medusa. And yeah, she's cuted up. Uh, she can get away with it. Definitely the kind of hero that can. She's so tanky. I don't think there's an MKB on anyone. No. Yeah, so she has all that evasion as well. She herself does have an MKB. Uh, trying to keep the shove going. They want to try to stabilize these lanes. If they can get this lane... This game very close. Roshan respawning in 10 seconds. That's certainly going to be the next object of obsession for either of these teams. Spear Vessel going to be Ratman's next choice. Will help with some of that healing, but they don't have a ton of it themselves. Just a bit of life steal. Divine Rapier bot on the Monkey King. Risky. If he's inside the Wukong's command and gets his BKB up before he gets hit by uh, anything, then he's fine. But now the Lycan just shoving his wolves in. They need to be careful. I mean, if they get Megad, I don't think they're in trouble. They've got a Medusa. They have a Monkey King with a Battle Fury and a Rapier. He's going for another one, too. Medusa going for her own Rapier. Pink's coming out there after Soft. Soft should be able to slip away from this. He's hiding. I don't know if he wanted that. Gets the Hex onto the Bane. 
should buy him all the time that he needs. Phase shifts away, throws out an orb for some scouting purposes. Roshan alive. I don't know if they know. That's the refresher shard, that's the cheese, that's the Aegis. If they get an Aegis on the Monkey King, oof. Or once Medusa gets her rapier, get an Aegis on the Medusa. This game is all over the place. It's going to be incredibly close. If Fav dies, though, things could be very bad. Tragen buying himself a Scythe device, throws his Aghanims into his backpack. And that Scythe could be crippling on this Medusa. They have a lot of tools to keep her controlled. The only thing that will keep her safe is her Stone Gaze. Uh, one thing is the uh, change of heart could go for a Lotus Orb. So could the... Uh, Oh, the wolves are going in onto this tower. There is backdoor protection, though. They throw out some ignites, trying to hit the creeps, though. But the rather tanky wolves, and now Puck getting gone on Silent Stuff, is going to die, it looks like. Buyback available on the Puck, but a clean kill for Ravenflight. Spectrum is, like, invincible to these wolves, and they're just going to chain force staff them around. Regeneration! Change of heart spotted. They might try to go in on him. He is alone for the moment. But they're at a distance. Puck buying back. Roshan is up. Both teams may be looking into the pit for their next play. Ping's coming out onto Roshan from the Radiant. Only a 10k gold lead. Basically negligible at 59 minutes into the game. XP also favoring Raven Flights. Now they turn their attention to Roshan, but Lycan just going to split push. This Roshan may be very hard to contest because if they do, the Lycan may just get their base. And they don't have shrines to get there. They need to go and they need to go quickly if they want to stop this. It's pretty slow going. The Tragans here now. It should be a lot faster. But like they're going to contest it. They're going to let them take it. I don't know if they have that much choice in the matter to begin with. Egg is likely to go on Trigon. The Refresher Shard on to the Tidehunter. Divine Rapier now bought up on the Medusa. She doesn't have buyback. This is the last ditch fight for both of these teams. Let's take a look at this buyback status though. Radiant have it on four of their heroes. So two fights would need to be one for the Dire. A very tense game. Only 8k gold in favor of the Dire now. Divinity, the ult pot from the Brewmaster. He wants to try to find something. They're going right on to the racks. Fortification is up and they just chunk away at these Brew Spirits. And Brew might just die if he's not careful. He loses his ult, but he does manage to get the Wind Panda to safety. Control spotted by that ward from Tragen at the bot lane. The fortification is available, but will it buy them enough time? There's two rapiers, one on Spectrum, one on Fav, and a little nervous. This is going to be a very tense team fight, and it depends on who gets to jump on who first. The Tidehunter with that Ravage has the double Ravage as well. Could cripple them. There is no buyback on this Medusa. There is no buyback on Fav. Soft trying to keep the waves clear, but it bought. It's still a push forward. It's a slow push, but a steady push. The illusion's coming in, and they're going in onto, onto the Medusa. Medusa's silence. The Ravage gonna come out. A double Ravage available. The clap coming in as well. He refreshes. He gets the Ravage onto four. Three heroes. Fav, the Dream Quill, does manage to connect. Tragen in serious trouble. He's getting very, very low. Has the Aegis. He's already dead. They've already lost two. And now they've lost three. The Brew, the Aegis, the second life. Will it be enough? Will it save him? He's hexed up and now taking a lot of damage. Meanwhile, Lycan going for the Ancient Control. He's not able to get it on his own. But man, these Reapers doing so much damage. But Dragon just might have killed out of the Earth Spirit. Earth Spirit, or Shaker, I should say, going to go down. And Maple Monkey needs to get out of here. He's taking a lot of damage. Puck going to go forward. They don't have any detection, though. Tragen may make a play onto them. It needs to be careful. The right clicks from this Medusa doing a lot of damage. They go onto him. They see him. They spot him. He gets managed to dodge the boundless strike. And he's going for something. He's trying to get away. Now the TP away from the Bane, and he's just turning his attention towards this Rax, but he's hexed, and he's not able to get it. And it looks like he will go down. Fav with a killing spree. And now buyback available for him, but he may buy just buy that second Rapier. Control turned his attention to these Ancient Towers, but wasn't able to get anything with it. There is buybacks available on several of the heroes, but not on the Phantom Lancer for two minutes. Will they be able to push, though? Lycan just being a huge nuisance in all of this. 
An incredibly close game, and as long as Lycan's alive, their buildings aren't safe. Especially now the fortification oh, is down. I think they way. could handle Megas with a Medusa, with a Monkey King, with Battle Fury, and a Rapier. Um, it's if... It's Dino's if he... Middle, yeah, Dino's he's starting to chip at it, but with backdoor protection, they can't get it. They need to equalize some of these lanes, especially this bot lane. Needs to be equal. Another Rapier bot on the Monkey King. Ping's coming out onto Ratman. Ratman caught in a nightmare. Fav coming into the mid. Respawn up on the Tidehunter. Medusa cleaning up this wave at bot. They're trying to split things up. Meanwhile, Control just continues the push. Radiant Travel 2's on battle. cooldown. Bot Rack's getting hit, but the fortification Radiant is popped. A buyback immediately from Dragon. And a retreat from Spectrum. The, uh, the Ravage is on cooldown for 30 seconds, so it would be difficult. And Control also back in the base. Soft can TP soon. We're going to shove out this wave up top. They should be able to kill this shrine pretty quickly. Yeah, Monkey King just chunks it away with his double rapier. The Boundless Strike crit with that rapier is just insanely powerful. Haste! Haste onto this onto Spectrum as well. A slow going game. Buyback forced out from Tragen is a benefit to the Dire, but things are still very, very difficult. And if you lose the Monkey King, you didn't just lose the Monkey King, you lost two Rapiers. That's like your entire team's net worth out the window. Monkey King finally caught up though, but Medusa's still miles ahead of everybody that's in this game. Excellent. Puck with a Moonshard, and yeah, Moonshard's for pretty much everybody, but Puck's sitting on top of 2k, has buyback soon, will have it before long, is able to outpace the increasing cost, and Fab continues to push, needs to be cautious. If he gets caught here from this smoke, it's over, and he might just walk right into it. They jump forward, they get the Ravage onto Fab. Fab spotted out, he has two Rapiers, he's silenced, he's official, he's dead. That's two Rapiers on deck. And oh no, what a disaster. They pick up one for each of their carries. Thank you very much. And now for the first time all game, a gold swing in their favor, and they have a lead. Suddenly Fab, a very, very, very underfarmed Monkey King. And Medusa may not be tanky enough to handle these guys, and Control can just chunk away at these towers. Puts his Necrobook in his backpack, doesn't care for it. And the Ags and the Boots actually put away in the backpack for Trajan. Tragen, and oh man. Dark times ahead. Monkey King dead for 80 seconds, no buyback. It's pretty much just the Medusa. If, if any hero could 1v5, it's her and maybe Void and Spectre. There's a couple. But uh, it's not going to be easy if they make a push for this. They're going very slowly. Even if Monkey King has buyback, he's down his rapiers. It doesn't matter. Only a minute now, and it looks like they're a little hesitant to push, but they might be grouping up for it. Control TPs to the bot lane. Travel's now purchased on this Medusa. Saving for the buyback. She absolutely needs to. Her Monkey King is dead. Roshan not responding for a while. Both teams perhaps need to time it next time. We have two minutes at least until Roshan is back. Spectrum is out. They might try to find him. Control shoving in that bot lane. All the other lanes will shove automatically because of the creep advantage. Pretty much just the Medusa now. Monkey King not worth a whole lot of gold. He's pretty much just a boundless strike at this point. And this Rax is their... I mean, I don't even think if they get this, it's the end of the game. Trigon sitting in the side. Tidehunter has Ravage. The first foot coming out. Ravage actually cooldown for 10 seconds. Professor going to be tied to next item. And it looks like he wants to try to force fortification. Demolished is a lot of bonus damage to this, but his spirits just get melted. He can't get them in close enough, and now they're after this Bruce Spirit. It's getting very, very low. It might actually die. They might lose the Brewmaster, but they jump in. The Ravage comes out. The disconnect on the Medusa. Now Trigon needs to get on her before she can uh, start turning anything. Now they're going right in for the Rax. They want to get it. A Silence not going to connect on anybody. Trigon is just diving for this Rax. He's getting so low, though. Is he going to be able to kill it? No, he's not. He dies. And that's another Rapier on deck. Brett might be able to pick that back up. Or I should say, uh, Monkey King. Now Fortification popped. His control is going in onto the Rax. They need to stop him, but he's so fast. He's getting away, and they're not able to save him. But now it looks like the Tide just starts to anchor down on this Rax. 
to the last fire Firefist getting very, very low, and he will die himself. And that other Rapier on the deck, who picked it up? It was Monkey King, so he's got some of that net worth back. But Control just turns his attention towards this Ancient. I wouldn't have drank so much water if I knew this game was going to go on for an hour, but here we are. This adds to the tension. Smoke running down the mid. They want to try to find something. Radiant scanning, though they will detect some heroes there. And they're just gunning down the mid lane. Puck will be defending against this Lycan by himself. Doesn't have a Dagon, but can stall him for quite some time. And now they're turning their attention. They just want to get... If they can equalize this lane or get this top lane, then things will become much easier for um, Divinity to take this game. It's incredibly even though. 40 seconds. Creeps going in on it. Tide buying back. Doesn't have Ravage though. No Refresher either. And Fire Fist could find himself in trouble. The Ancient getting dove on by Control. Control just going for it. But he pops his BKB and now they need to TP back already. Control himself is able to get away. He's just so fast. And now TP's forced out. But start change of heart. Left it all by himself down here. And there's no buyback on this Earthshaker either. He pops his Ghost after trying to hide. He pops the Fissure as well, but no, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to get out. And he'll get killed out by the Brain Set from Maple Monkey. And Control just putting in too much work. They can't do anything against him. With that Rapier in his inventory, he very nearly just killed the Puck. Fortification on cooldown for three more minutes. Buyback statuses are mostly positive, which is bad for me. I desperately have to use the bathroom. If this were a real game, I wouldn't even mention that. I just tank and I just go for it. I also have homework to do, but that's fine. What effigy is this? I don't even see what that is. Is that a Pangolier? Probably. That's a Gyrocopter. It's weird. Travel 2 is now on the Medusa, will allow her to TP to her team. Where's her right here? Did she just like get rid of it? I don't understand. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. I'm dumb. I don't know. I thought I, I, I guess, I thought that was something else. I don't know. She wants to buy another one. Spectrum. Roche up in 40 seconds. Ping's coming together. They may want to smoke, perhaps. Is that something that they're considering? May want to try to find something. Found the strike to clear the wave out instantly. Yeah. Thank God. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I'm glad we all came to an agreement. be ready to get going soon. A lot of rapiers in this game and just insanely high net worths.
campaign. Looking pretty good. Level 25 on most of these heroes, I think. Only 24 on the two supports of a uh, of uh, divinity, which is probably hurting them a little bit. The two second enchant totem cooldown, for instance, would be very, very good on the uh, just to spam those aftershocks out. And ogre, the fire blast damage would be a huge nuke. So we'll see how that comes into play. They're both closing in on that level 25, but it will still take some time. Where were we? Spectrum chilling down here, ready to buy that second rapier at a moment's notice. Uh, <laughs> wonder if you drop it, like you just throw it in your in your fountain, get it by. Like, you know what? You know what Fab should have done? He should have bought the second rapier, put it in the fountain, and just carried the one so he could have the backup rapier. Dyer's bottom barracks are under attack. The bottom racks getting beat up by the brew, but no, it's good. It's good. Not the brew. Uh. Must be. Oh, I guess it was the brew. Just going for an Octarine core. Already has a 65 second primal split cooldown, so it's only a 35 second cooldown, and really it's just 15. Now they jump forward trying to find whatever they can, but they just kill some illusions. Buyback available. Primal split coming out again. Uh, we'll see if they try to make something happen with it. He's got to keep the brew. The, the Earth Panda is the only one that really hits buildings hard, so I don't know. And Medusa just cleans these up. She does not care. Try to get the tornado. Try to get the purge. But he loses that brew panda. That earth. The, the wind panda. But again, very short cooldown. So he can just keep trying to do that. But I don't think it's worth it. It doesn't do anything. Speaking of doing things though. Roshan alive. If control gets that. This game could become very difficult. They already have such a hard time dealing with him. Especially during his ult. With that rapier. Now that he's at the road, it's dying very fast, and I don't think that Divinity knows this is happening. It looks like they will be able to get this Roche with four free, no scary Echo Slams coming in. No Wukong's commands, no Stone Gazes. Egg is probably going to be put on Control. Um, nope, they put it on the PL and give the Refresher Shard back to that Tidehunter, so they got the Double Ravage Puck. With his ags in his backpack, he really wants to keep that. Though I feel like, um, need it's almost mandatory against this lichen. The game continues on at to the 73 minute mark. Primal split was committed. Tragen jumps back, dodging from the strike and the mystic snake. Where I die, I'd be looking at my ancient. Ancient gets poked, but still alive. The spot rack's also still alive. Fortification available. They just have to try to all in on a big double Ravage. Spectrum has got out of position. Hex now. They have the feature available. One Ravage connecting on to three heroes. Now the second Ravage coming out. Spe they get it on Spectrum. Spectrum is stunned. Spectrum's basically dead. Spectrum doesn't have buyback available. And the buyback immediately. And nice Echo Slam coming out. Control getting low. Doesn't have an Aegis of his own. Blue Fab throws out his Wukong command. He's very, very tanky. Needs to stay inside this. The Stone Gate's coming out. Bane dead. Tide dead. And now they're on to Trigon. Trigon getting extremely low. He does have an Aegis though. He's coming back to life. And now they turn their attention towards the Brew Pandas. The Blue Pandas are getting low. And now. Uh, Trigon jumping away is fine for the time being. Throws out his spirit lands, and now he's caught in the Yules. They do have a hex coming down in just a second. They get the hex onto him, and now he just turns his attention actually to Monkey King. Fab gonna go down, and now Trigon getting low. They have a hex of their own, and he's popped by it, but he's silenced, but I don't know if they can kill him. He does doppelganger away in that fight. A ton of buybacks were committed from the Dyer. Well, one, but it's the one that matters, the Medusa, forced to buy back. Aegis was claimed, and now he's going in onto this Earth, Earth, Earth Shaker. He's trying to force to have himself away, but he pops under the Bloodthorn. And now that's two heroes dead with no buyback. It's 3v3. Spectrum beats his PL. He has two rapiers. That's a lot of damage. He gets that Bloodlust off. He's doing so much damage. Trigon actually going to go down. He does have buyback, but it doesn't matter. He buys back. Now they turn their attention to the Ancient. Now Puck just gets eaten alive by the Lycan, but immediately buys back. And now Spectrum Control stuns himself. He's getting low, and he's going to go down too. It's a double kill. Now the Brew Pandas, they toss the Medusa into the air, and they turn their attention towards that. And now the Aegis, or sorry, they have the um, Megas. And now a 9k gold lead. A bunch of buybacks were forced. But with against the Medusa, I don't think they care that much about the Megas. Oh 
Trigon bought back. No longer has it now. Level 25 on everybody in this game now. The XP lead is utterly... Yeah, it's, it's zero, I'm pretty sure. Two rapiers on Spectrum. I would probably prefer to see that butterfly take the place of the MKB. Um, just added survivability against this Phantom Lancer who doesn't have an MKB of his own. Oh, but he does have a Bloodthorn. So maybe an okay choice. Just try to out damage him. And he really did do so much damage. Killed Tragen in no time flat once he jumped in. DD went on this PL though. That's a ton of damage. And I think all the rapiers are back on Dire side now. Unless like Bane or Tide has one. No. Monkey King going to buy his. That's the fourth rapier in this game, and they can really keep this base clean for a super long time with the rapiers, with the Battle Fury. For me. And they push fast enough that if they just sent heroes in different lanes, they'd be able to do it. 50k net worth on this Medusa, 38k on Lycan, 38k on PL, 35k on Puck, and 32k on the Monkey King. These heroes are rolling in gold. Divinity struggling now. This PL is just a monster. The Lycan split push he has is insane. Cool. Buying his own personal rapier after losing one. Talk about rapier gaming. Tragen put his heart away, but probably not worried about that. I think at this point, it's just see if you can outkill them. Just try to murder them before things go horribly wrong. Illusion. Sorry about that. And now Tide has no refresher yet. So that's probably like one of the biggest things to, to talk about. Is that the only time they have double ravage is when Roche is up. Once he gets his own refresher, they'll be able to push a little bit more safely, a little more frequently. Eh, I think you get rid of this Ags. Just take the heart instead of the Ags. Like the Ags was fine in the mid game when you needed it to team fight better, but now you just have so much damage. Soft sitting on 2k gold has his own moon shard. I don't think he's giving one to anybody else. With those illusions, he's definitely able to keep things cleared up though. But Medusa can just farm them. They're worth a, a tiny bit of gold. 52k net worth on this Medusa. She can't eat another moon shard. There's no alchemist to give her an axe just for the stats. There's, she's at her peak unless she wants to get like two more rapiers, but you really want to have that mana on the Medusa to increase your tankiness. Buybacks available on three raiding heroes and one dire hero, so things are very tense. Medusa's buyback will be up in three minutes, so I think they need to make a go while Medusa's buyback is on cooldown. But they need to be cautious. Puck with a BKB now. Interesting choice. No buyback now on the Puck, but Puck didn't have it in the first place. Was forced to use in that last engagement. Like in your six slotted, you don't have to farm anymore. Stop. They're playing it very safe though, but the next Roshan, we don't know when that's up. Tide Refresher is complete. This may be their signal. Double Ravage is kind of what they need. They have Sentry Wards all over this base now. You should probably just buy a gem. Get that on your Shaker. Control though. He has his own buyback, so... <laughs> they have more buybacks, so technically if they just fight, if they lose, then they might be able to just win it the second fight. 80 minutes now. The Medusa could buy her third rapier if she so pleases. Would we'll probably dump the MKB for it. I don't know what the primal split's for, maybe just a scout. I'm not caught in that, so it's gonna be just fine. 
Uh, is that a Battle Fury Ogre? Seems so. I'd rather a Maelstrom on Ogre because it synergizes better with his attack speed. The proc will do more damage than your right clicks. So Molnir or something would be okay, I feel like. MKB now bought on the Phantom Lancer. Puts his Ags away, puts his boots away. Found a Haste now. Seduce that at 54k net worth. Let's see where's the, the GPM button is. Oh, it's current. 700 on the Puck, 700 on the Medusa. It's just a crazy game. But Divinity are stuck in their base trying to defend against Megas. Their fortification is back up. Flybacks will begin cooling down before too long. The Medusa's more, most specifically up in 20 seconds. They've kind of missed their window to go on that. There's two rapiers on each of these carries, though. That's so much damage. Things are definitely slow going. Roshan is alive. The Radiant definitely need to pick that up. Can probably get it pretty easily. So we'll see if they're capable of that. Spectrum just going to continue to clear out this wave. Um, again, no new items available for her. She's six slotted. Monkey King can get travel twos. That's it. Puck, maybe want to. No, pretty good. I would like to see a Lotus Orb on the Earthshaker. Put that on your Medusa. It's very good for you. Curious as to what they're waiting for now. Fiend's Grip with this, what, 12 second duration, but it's likely to be canceled, especially if it's cast during Stone Gaze. Tied on him with the cooldown reduction. I, I want to tell them that Roche is up. Okay. Fight me best of three. I think the Radiant actually have a much more significant advantage than they're expecting, especially because if they get this Roche, that's a triple ravage for their Tide Hunter. A triple ravage on him is a game winning. The Medusa's buyback is back up though, and I believe Fab's is as well. Nope, Fab doesn't quite have it yet, but he doesn't really have the gold. Not to mention he would be out of um, uh, rapiers, so he'd be like pretty much useless. The triple ravage though, maybe their sign, they drop the cheese onto the ground. And and Aegis likely to go on to the Phantom Lancer. His buyback is still on cooldown. Nope, it's not. It's back up. Uh, buybacks are up on almost everybody except Monkey King and Earthshaker. So buyback advantage still going to the Radiant. Tidehunter picking up that Refresher Orb Shard. So that's a triple Ravage for him. If he times it really well, then that's... Let's see, 2, 6, then 0.8. Uh, 10 seconds of stun. There are buybacks on everybody, but Medusa, she has some items to bring in if her rapiers go on deck. Fav, he's got nothing once those rapiers are on deck. And it looks like even though they have their Aegis, they have the Triple Ravage, they have the cheese on someone somewhere, I'm sure. Bane has a couple. I am making mac and cheese later. I wonder what kind of mac and cheese with the uh, roast cheese would taste like. I mean, I imagine it's like a, I don't know, Illusion. it doesn't age that, it hasn't aged that long, so it'd be like hella fresh, so I'm imagining it's like super sloppy, really, really um, like creamy, so you'd have to put in like a bunch of like, mm, no, Yo plain Greek yogurt is really, really good in mac and cheese, it gives us like really big thickness. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty long game. I don't usually talk to the team. So this is an in-house type thing anyway. 
So it's very casual. I did agree to cast, get some good practice in, and I really appreciate that these guys uh, appreciate me. Makes me want to continue casting. I usually just do it for myself uh, because I like to do it, but it's always nice to be appreciated, so I'm definitely glad to be casting this. Um, and it's been a great game. There's been some really phenomenal team fights that I like to think I did a pretty good job covering. And gives me some more stuff to put on my highlight reel while I look for work. And uh, Although the one thing is, I have homework due in like an hour and a half. So I need to get started on that. It's not like it's long, it's just discussion questions and shit, so it's pretty much piss easy. Uh, but again, I really enjoy casting Dota just in general. Uh, I'm making mac and cheese and having friends over to play this board game Gloomhaven tonight. For those who uh, <laughs> aren't in the hobby, uh, it's uh, really intense, really long. It's just like... It's fun though. No, he no, doesn't. Oh, first Ravage coming in and now he has to refresh the double Ravage coming in. The Fissure, the triple Ravage is available. The Fiend's Grip also coming in. They're killing two heroes. Medusa's dead. Fab is dead. The Echo Slam connects on a bunch of heroes. It's huge. But is it going to be enough? It's not enough to change the fight just yet. Fab is back, but he doesn't have any rapiers neither. It's the moose of Pybacks on everybody so far. The Spectrum doing as much as he can. The Stone Gaze coming out. And now the Yules, the, they're going in on the Ancient, the Ancient. Still alive for the time being. Tide are going to go down. He does die to the Medusa. Medusa picking up a rapier. Grabs the one. And now they're trying to continue to fight. They're going on a dragon. Dragon's still alive. But now they get the stun on the Brewmaster. Bane getting low. The, fe the Fire Blast coming out. And the Split coming out as well. The Wukong's command. But there's nobody in here. Control hasn't been involved in this fight just yet, but Tragen getting low, and if he dies, it could be very, it could be abysmal. But he's still alive for the time being, able to run away for the time, but now Fab going on to the main, being gonna go down. Medusa still alive, has those ra has those rapiers picked up too, and now they need to kill up the, they need to kill these creeps. They're the catapults are chipping away at this ancient. They haven't used fortification yet either, and that's critical that they hold on to it. Fav has picked up three rapiers now. So he's now sitting pretty high up there on the net worth and doing significant damage. Buybacks though committed from every single dire hero except the Ogre Magi. So the next push, it could be crucial. Buybacks available on every Radiant hero as well. Retman picking up his own, uh, oh, he just barely gets away from that, but picking up his um, Battle Fury. Again, I would prefer to Mol a Molnir on him. And sorry, I closed the net worth thing. Molnir, I think, would be better with Ogre. It synergizes more with your Bloodlust and like the Battle Fury. You don't do a lot of damage. The Molnir proc though triggers a lot, so I like it better. And they're looking for Tragen. Tragen though has Doppelganger. They spot him. Another Rapier bot on this Medusa. The Boundless Strike coming out. Massive damage. He's dead. They slaughter him in no time at all. That Boundless Strike, huge damage from it. What's that? Is it? 275% damage of uh, over 1k. Yeah, that's almost a 3k nuke from that crit. And man, they may force buyback on him, but Tidehunter has his control waiting in the wings. What's going on to that Ancient? But I don't know that he'll be able to. Spectrum continues pushing, and they just have Fab going down the lane. But if he dies, he loses his three rapiers, and then he's got nothing. PL, Tragen buying back, and I don't know if Monkey King by himself can handle this, this Phantom Lancer. Clammy. With 3.6k, his Octarine Core is finished. The Primal Split cooldown is 26 seconds. It's, it's only got a 6 second cooldown, essentially. So he can just be in that Primal Split all the time. It looks like they're trying to get after him. They're going in onto the Echo Slam. And Clammy gets cut down by Fav. That Boundless Strike shatters him. He's going to have one hell of a hangover after that, that's for sure. And now Pop trying to keep these waves cleared out as best as he can, but doesn't really have that much to keep waves clean. Is going for a Dagon, and they might find Tragen. They know exactly where he is. Bruce spotting him out, and oh, Fav might be able to find something. It goes in on him. He gets the Boundless Strike. It does a massive damage. The Kraken Shell saves him for now. He's trying to get this Tide to Tide with the Shiva's Guard, but he gets a kill. It's a killing spree for Fav. And now there's a Lycan here. They need to be careful if he man fights, though. The Abyssal Blade, massive damage. Fav dead. No buyback available. That's three Rapiers on the deck, but Medusa just going to town. She's getting. Oh, no, look at that. The Dream Coil doing a lot of damage. And now the Hex onto the Lycan. Lycan, he's a pig, not a wolf, and he's going down. He gets himself stunned at the very end. It's a double kill for Spectrum. Buyback available. There's three Rapiers still on the deck. Retman, did he pick up one himself? Retman has one, but now he's hexed up. He could have overextended Tragen going in, trying to pick up a rapier of his own. Buybacks on three heroes. Fav, still no buyback. A buyback from the Ogre Magi. It's a back and forth exchange. Spectrum TPing away. Doesn't want to get caught. If he got caught, it would be the end of the game. Buyback and cooldown for four minutes. Monkey King dead for 90, and there were still two rapiers on the ground. No, one rapier on the ground. No, wait, two, maybe? They give one to Bane, I guess? But uh, he can't use it. He put it on the Bane, but he can't use it. Uh, he would have to die to give it to Bane. But now this is a fight without a Monkey King. Stone gets on cooldown for 40 seconds. This may very well be the end of the game. 2k gold. And this graph has been 
pretty divinity favored, but for the first time, it isn't. One minute on Fab, and even if he were back, he's pretty much just the bound to strike stun. Jump forward from Soft. Soft needs to knock his silence. If he does, he's super dead. He has no buyback either. He already used the BKB on the Medusa. He could be in serious trouble. He might get jumped on. He pops the Dream Club, but it only catches the Tide. That's not what they want. The Hex comes out, and they're going on to Claim. Claim taking a lot of damage to top of the bound to strike. And now the Fissure coming out, and they get Trigan. Trigan said no buyback on him. Two minutes without Phantom Lancer. And now Brew turns his attention towards the Ancient. Pops his ult. Lycan shape-shifting. He's on the Prowl, on the Hunt. Change of heart, but he knows he's after an Ancient. A nice Ravage catches on the Control. Pops his BKB, the double Ravage. I don't know if they can stop me hitting the Ancient. It's going to finally die after 90 minutes. The game finally ends in favor of Raven Flight. What a game. It took quite a long time, and I don't think I've ever seen so many rapiers in my life. A spectacular game to end the day on. I don't think I'll be talking that much later today. My voice so raw, but I can't imagine the fatigue that these players are feeling. It was one phenomenal game, and unfortunately, they just weren't able to stop. Those chain ravages kept Medusa from doing anything, and Fav dying at what was probably the worst time for him. And without those rapiers, he really doesn't have anything. So it ultimately goes to Raven Flight, despite Divinity having a lead for the majority of that game. Again, a spectacular showing. What a treat to watch, and I am lucky to have gotten to cast that game, despite it being 90 minutes. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. I don't know that anyone will actually watch the full 90 minutes to see how that cast went. Uh, I might, just to take some notes for myself. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to casting games for these players again. It's always, it's always been been fun. So thank you guys again so much for tuning in. I have a bunch of errands to run and then a bunch of homework to do before I have people over tonight. So I'll be logging off and <laughs> I think if I were them I'd be pretty done for now anyways. So again guys thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the cast. I hope you guys have some good feedback for me and I will hopefully see you guys again 